Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining me. My name is Rachel Berger. I wear a couple of different hats in the field here. So today I'm joining you as a learning disability assistive technology specialist with Microsoft Education. And I work um, mainly in dys dyslexia and ensuring that students who struggle with dyslexia, whether it's identified or unidentified, have access to assistive technology. And um, I also work in accessibility overall for um, all types of learners. In addition to that, I am also the executive director of a Minneapolis-based nonprofit that works with students who have learning disabilities. And I also am a mother of three sons, two of which have their share of learning differences, including dyslexia. So. We're all in, in learning differently in my household. And so today I am going to take you through some of the supports um, that Microsoft Education has provided for students who struggle with dyslexia and how you can utilize these during remote learning as well as in-class learning. So here we've got my email address in case you guys are not able to get any questions answered today or even in the event that you are navigating utilizing these tools and something crops up that you want an answer for. Also, if you feel like tweeting today, here's my Twitter handle, or if you wanna follow me via Twitter, here you go. Um, would love to have some new followers and a little bit of um, the ability to engage with you via Twitter. So let's get started. So I'm going to start out today with a slide that's near and dear to my heart. And this is a visual image uh, that many people are familiar with, with um, some students on a block looking over a fence to see a baseball game. So um, me, the main reason that I like to talk about this slide is I spent most of my educational years like the student who's on a block but still unable to see over the fence to participate in that game. And so, you know, equity in education has deep meaning for me as a mother, but also as an individual who struggles with um, dyslexia as well. And so there's that common misconception out there that equity and equality mean the same thing and that they can be used interchangeably, especially when talking about education. But the truth is they don't mean the same thing and, and they can't be used interchangeably. The words are similar, but the difference between them is crucial, especially when we're talking about students who learn differently or struggle with um, invisible disabilities. Equity encourages access to the same opportunities specific to need. And uh, before we can enjoy in equality, we really need to ensure equity. So I'm going to show you today how with Microsoft Learning Tools technology, we can provide students with access to or equitable access to their curriculum. We can help them gain in their independence and we can help them personalize in their learning experience and also really, really be a part of that learning community. OK, so I'm going to give you a little bit of backdrop before we move into demonstrating within the app here today. And so continuing along here, a backdrop on how Microsoft got involved in creating these tools. Uh, there was a survey put out by Scholastic in 2014 and 14,000 educators responded. And what they learned was that classrooms today are vastly different from, say, um, well, I'm speaking for myself here, but perhaps you and I, not knowing anyone's age here. <laughs> so classrooms are way different than when I was a learner in the classroom. And so three quarters of all educators report working in classrooms where student reading levels span four or more grade levels within that one gen ed classroom. Three quarters of all classrooms have students who have special education needs. Now that can be an IEP, a 504, or some unique level of need that requires some modification or accommodation. And then half of all of our educators today report having English as a second language in their classroom. So they have students with ELL or non-native speakers. And again, up to 50% of instructional time can be lost managing all of those needs, including assistive technology. So our teachers have a really, really heavy load. And then think about how that comes into play as we are in this uh, remote learning era. So a lot of things going on for our educators and we need to ensure that they have the ability to engage every learner. So from 
And when it comes to inclusive technology, Microsoft likes to think about these three categories. The first is students of all abilities and enabling them to um, personalize their learning experience in a way that works best for them. Next is educators and in ensuring them the ability to engage every learner by providing accessible tools for the classroom. And then lastly, on a school level, equity and inclusion are top of mind for everyone from the administrators to educators to students and even parents. And so wanting to make sure that we at Microsoft can meet the needs of all students and empower them to reach their full educational potential. From an accessibility standpoint, about a billion people globally require some level of assistive technology. Um, assistive tech benefits everyone, including people with permanent disabilities, like some of the ones listed in this slide, to individuals who have temporary impairments like a broken arm or a situational requirement like working hands free. Uh, disabilities come in many different forms, both visible and invisible. Today we are talking about the invisible disabilities such as dyslexia, dysgraphia, and dyscalculia. Uh, we'll talk about how, you know, inclusive design and how things that are designed inclusively can help all people, not just those with the impairments. So um, we'll get into that in just a moment. I got one more slide for you before we go ahead and start demonstrating within the apps. And this is really important because um, this was the moment that these tools were created. So Microsoft holds a hackathon every year. And this is something where anyone in the company can work with anyone they like on any technology they like for a week out of every year. And so as you can imagine, when tech people are allowed to play, some really great things come out of that. And so 2015, reading, font, accessibility, and education experts came together to look at the latest science, research, and technology techniques specifically on dyslexia. And the reason for that is dyslexia, whether again, whether it's identified or not, it impacts 17 to 20 percent of our population's ability to read printed word. So, and again, with, with that type of a thing, you have some really severe st statistics stacked against the individual to experience that. So this team decided to build some tools into OneNote as an add-in. They won the hackathon that year. And then they went on to work with educators and students focused on dyslexia to see how these tools serve that population. And they discovered, uh, excuse me, discovered that the capabilities help not only students with dyslexia and dysgraphia, but also students who were having ADHD, non-native speakers, uh, emerging readers, and all students, really many more beyond that initial intention. OK, so let's go ahead then and I'm going to escape out of my PowerPoint deck here. And I'm going to start out with our immersive reader tool. And show you what that's like in OneNote because that is where it was created. So let me grab my trusty friend OneNote. All right. We should be sharing my screen here in OneNote. For those of you that aren't familiar with OneNote, it is a digital notebook. Back in the day when I was in school, we had these multi-subject notebooks in things called Trapper Keepers, where we kept all of our information. And now here I've got it digitally in my little, you know, my laptop, but I've got all of these different subjects here on the left. And then within those subjects, you can see if I was to add a page, I've got different content. So we're gonna start out with a third grade reading example. And the reason I'm bringing this up is, during this period of remote learning, things got rather difficult when it comes to sharing things um, with students who are not reading at grade level. And so we have students and educators who are working within OneNote or Word and utilizing Immersive Reader to enable that access. So when you load content into OneNote, you can do that through the insert tab up here and then file. When you click file, it's gonna pull things from your computer. I always liken this to showing someone my closet, which is hardly disorganized. So I'm gonna click off of that. What you're gonna insert from file here is a Word document or a PDF that you'd like the student to be able to access, okay? And once you've done that, you can click on the View tab. And then we click on Immersive Reader. 
So now Immersive Reader will pop a skin over top of the page and enable us with text to speech with this click of a button. So let's go ahead and check that out today. So we get highlighting of text and a neural text to speech uh, voice here. We have the capability to increase the voice speed or change the voice selection. Remember, not all students who are processing language auditorily can process it at the same speed as even when they're processing someone talking um, because it is a different voice that there is, is non-human voice and so they have to process information differently it could be dyslexia it could be auditory processing but the ability for the student to begin personalizing their consumption of content is huge so let's go up here to the right and we have our text preferences and so you'll notice i can increase my text sizing and here we can increase the spacing. Now, one of my dyslexic sons tells me he needs the spacing. He actually uses Immersive Reader in a couple different ways. He uses it to just visually change how he's consuming that content and, and decides sometimes he doesn't want the text read to him. And with the spacing feature, this enables him to read things in a manner in which he tells me with spacing, his brain slows down. Otherwise, without spacing, what he's doing is he's focusing on fluency um, and he's just plowing through the words. And by the time he gets to the end, he doesn't really remember what he read. So again, the point here is that students can personalize that consumption to what their specific needs are. And so here we've got font choices. Um, you know, maybe someone prefers a more handwritten style like Comic Sans. And then down here we have our background colors. Uh, this is because not everyone prefers to read black text on white background, and that can be very straining for individuals who have dyslexia or low vision or even something called convergence insufficiency. And so here you're offered the choice to again personalize that experience. Under our grammar tools, we have syllabification, so I can click on syllables there, and now all the while it's highlighting and reading aloud. I have words. And so we can also utilize parts of speech. So I'm just going to do nouns and verbs and then show my labels. I can choose with this little drop down what color that is so that it doesn't conflict with the background color I've selected or maybe it's just a preference. And my favorite tools are under the book symbol here. So we have line focus mode, which enables us to see a certain amount of text on the page at one time. So back in the day when I was learning to read, we had reading rulers. Well, this is it digitally. So um, again, enabling the user to choose what they'd like to see at one time or what their experience is. My absolute favorite whoops, is picture dictionary. So I can click on a word here. And I get a photograph that pops up to help create meaning or comprehend that word. This is done in conjunction with BoardMaker, and they make the visual images for a lot of individuals who have speech or communication disorders. So we've partnered with them, and that is how we have all these wonderful pictures in here. And then lastly, we last spring a translator so let's say that i'm a non-native speaker or maybe like in the case of my high school my recent graduate he in spanish uh he's taking spanish class and he just finds that he learns things easier if he listens to it in english first and then goes into spanish but so whatever the reason here your students have the capability to again personalize that consumption so now i've changed it to spanish i'm going to push play here Whoops. Okay, so we've got this wonderful accented uh, Spanish speech to text. And then you'll notice up here I can toggle between both the original version and the Spanish version with just a click of a button. And hey, Picture Dictionary even follows in Spanish as well. So wonderful tool here. And um, that is, in a nutshell, what we have with Immersive Reader built into our friend OneNote.
I am going to just going to check our chat for a minute here and see what we've got cropping up and make sure that we don't have a whole bunch of stuff going in. Okay, so Marilyn, you've got a question here. It sounds like, um, and let me just read aloud to everyone because sometimes everyone, you know, there's others with the same question. Can immersive reader only be added to an article through OneNote? No, it can't. I'm gonna show you all the ways that you can find immersive reader and utilize it, Marilyn. So let's see with what I'm gonna do next, if that covers the question that you have. And please, if it doesn't, make sure to type back into the into the chat window and I will I will further answer. But I've got a lot of bells and whistles to show you guys. So without further ado, let's go ahead and go into one of the other places we access immersive reader. OK, so I'm not sure how many of you have heard of Edge Browser, but that is what we're going to pop up next. And Edge is Microsoft's Internet browser. Bear with me here. My screen sharing. Here we go. Edge is Microsoft's Internet browser. It's and, and I'm using the Edge Chromium version, and this is really important to know. And so when you utilize Edge Browser versus like say Google Chrome, and by the way, guilty is charged. I use Google Chrome and I use Edge, but I'm gonna tell you why you want to make Edge your premium or your primary search engine. It's because all of these tools are built in automatically for free and they're just right there available. So we've got a website here called Tween Tribune. And again, I'm in Edge Chromium version. I've pulled up Tween Tribune. I love Tween Tribune uh, because of the amazing 12 content it has, both for students and educators. You can see here, I've got an article on Tootsie Rolls. I could search on all kinds of different topics here. And even better, uh, Tween Tribune Lexile levels content for students. So I think that's really amazing. But the point is, Let's say that I'm a student and we're in this period of remote learning and I've got to look up something for a report or it's you know assigned to me that I've got to do some research on the internet. That can be a very difficult task for an individual with dyslexia um, or who simply struggles to read. And so um, very exhausting. It's kind of like overloading a power strip when you're asking a student who is not proficient in reading to do research on the internet. And if you'll notice this page here, there's a lot of extra stuff. And so that visually is very arresting and distracting. So what we have is immersive reader. And I've made my mouse pointer really large personally because I like it that way. But also when I'm presenting, I think it's a little easier for you to see. So I've got this purple mouse pointer and I'm pointing up here in my um, browser to the immersive reader icon. And so again, just want to call attention to what that icon looks like because you're going to start seeing it literally everywhere. So when you see that, you can click on it. And now all of my ads have been wiped out and I have this article in a way that uh, visually is not so arresting. And I have access to utilizing, you'll notice if I'm hovering up here, my toolbar pops down. So I could simply use the read aloud feature and have the article read aloud to me. But I'm in denial that I need glasses. And so I probably need to kick up my text sizing. And I do like that spacing. And you'll notice um, that we have the background colors here. And so I'm just going to swap out my background colors. So again, here I'm personalizing my experience to a way that works best for me. And similarly to OneNote, um, how I was demonstrating in there, I've got the ability to choose line focus if I was to turn this on. I also have grammar tools, so I can break words into syllables. Maybe that's the way I prefer to read or can highlight my parts of speech. So all of these tools are right here in Edge Browser, mainstream internet search available to anyone. So, OK, so and once we click on the read aloud button, we can play, we can pause, we can skip ahead, we can skip back. And we also have our voice options and our speed off here to the right. So something else to know, um, we will get back into the slide deck and, and cover this, but because I already have it pulled up as a tab, I'd like you guys to know 
third party, you know, apps and publishers also have immersive reader embedded in. So I'm clicking on a page here that's Flipgrid. If you're familiar with Flipgrid, immersive reader is embedded in and you'll see that little icon. And when you see that, your students, you'll see here how that's working. Your students can click on that and get that whole immersive reader experience where they can personalize how they're consuming that content. All right, one more thing I want to show you before we move on in our slide deck and also move towards covering um, another tool that utilizes Immersive Reader is Word. And so many of us are familiar with Microsoft Word and um, the wonderful thing about it is that Immersive Reader is built into Word as well. So let's take a look just like in OneNote, we go to the View tab, and here's our Immersive Reader icon. We click on that. And now we have this Immersive Reader experience. And you'll notice I've got my words highlighted in, or highlighting in red and green. I've got the sepia colored background color, and I've got this larger font and spacing. That is because Word and OneNote sync up with one another. And there is a setting that memorizes your settings so I can go in and change if I want to, but it's really nice to know that anytime I'm going to open something using that immersive reader experience, I'm going to have the, sim the same settings as I had previously utilized. So again, here's immersive reader. Okay, so this is Word Online. We also have Word Desktop. So the thing to know is there are online versions of Word and OneNote in which you'll utilize Immersive Reader, and there's also desktop versions. Any, um, If you have the desktop version, you can also utilize the online version. But if you're using an iPad, a Mac, or Chrome, you want to have the online version. That's how you're going to access Immersive Reader, the online version of Word and OneNote. Okay, so let's go back into our PowerPoint deck for a moment. And I wanna show you another place that we can, or another tool that you can use, Immersive Reader. So let me grab, we are going to talk about something called Office Lens. And so this is a free app you can get in, um, you can get it in the App Store utilizing sorry just trying to click there we go this is uh off to the right here you see the icon for office lens so that should be familiar to you or that's what you want to look for in the app store again it's free it's available to anyone utilizing an ipad an iphone or an android and so let's just watch this video what happens when we're utilizing office lens Sorry, it paused. Let's continue here. So I want to pause it there. What happened was we used Office Lens to snap a photograph of text. So you see a book here. And they're using Office Lens on their device, uh, whether it's an iPad or an iPhone. And they're snapping a photograph of text that they'd like read aloud. And the Office Lens feature runs OCR and then enables the individual to, let's see, select right here, uh, Immersive Reader, or they can put the content into OneNote or Word. But if you're utiliz utilizing Immersive Reader right then and there on that device, whether it's an iPhone or again, an iPad, you have all of those Immersive Reader features that we just talked about. So you can see from this visual image, okay, so we've got text sizing, background colors, all of the things that we have in OneNote and Word Online, okay? So Office Lens, and this is a phenomenal tool for students to be able to use during remote learning. Um, so now I'm gonna show you one more video 
This was done during remote learning by one of my sons who has dysgraphia. And this is utilizing office lens for dysgraphia. So we were getting a lot of packets early on in our remote learning this spring. And that was great, except for if you're a dysgraphic child and you're trying to write into these smaller spaces that weren't really designed for someone who struggles with writing. That's really, really difficult. And something like this can take over an hour for my son to do. And so what we did instead was utilize office lens. And so you'll see here, snapping a photo. I'm now grabbing a text box up here with that large T. That means text box. And then you dictate using that device's dictation. And then you can move that text box to where it's appropriate on that worksheet. So you're basically having a text box that you're dictating in and overlaying that on top of that photograph you created. Now you'll notice here you can also enlarge or shrink that text box as well so that it more appropriately fits. All right, and then you can simply send it to the educator via email. So we removed our obstacles that we were experiencing and definitely was an incredible help for my sons and for other students that we work with as well. Okay, so we have covered in a nutshell, also every, every um, place you will find immersive reader, except this new slide here, forms. So if you're building quizzes and texts, or I'm sorry, quizzes and tests, Immersive Reader is embedded into Microsoft Forms and something that you'll want to utilize for your students to help them again more independently be able to uh, take tests or quizzes. So if you create that in Forms, Immersive Reader is right there at the top. Okay, and so we're wrapping up on our Immersive Reader and the reading features for students with dyslexia or reading struggles, and we're going to be moving towards writing in just a moment. Um, these are some of the EdTech apps or publishers that have Immersive Reader already. This image is rapidly outdating as we add more. Um, as you know, we also have Flipgrid and KidBlog and Pear Deck. So, um, to see all of those, you can go to this link, aka.ms backslash immersive reader. And again, be aware of that immersive reader icon because it's going to be popping up everywhere. This page is all about the immersive reader. I would highly encourage you to check this out. Um, aka.ms backslash all about immersive reader. It's got all the latest research, it's got videos on how to and more. And so really a great page for you if you're just starting out with Immersive Reader. Next, I want to share with you, um, Microsoft is in partnership with a uh, UK-based charity made by Dyslexia, and they have worked with Microsoft to create dyslexia training modules for educators. And so right now they have module one and two out on what is dyslexia, why do we need to support it, what are the tools and supports, etc. And these are absolutely amazing. You can take them from the comfort of your own home. It's about 50 minutes long and anybody is welcome to take them. And so uh, module number three will be out this fall as well. So please, I encourage you to check it out. And then here we have what we affectionately call the Microsoft Learning Tools periodic chart of availability. So this will tell you what you get across, you know, which features you get across which um, apps. And let's go ahead and talk about writing. Actually, you know what? How about I take a couple of questions here? I'm pretty sure there's a couple things in there. So let's make sure we don't have anything hanging out there before we move on. Actually, we're looking pretty good. OK, so. OK, so let's go ahead into writing. And 
I'm going to start out with a pretty visceral photo here of some students that are asked to do a writing assignment. They don't look too excited. And this is pretty much what happens when you are struggling with dyslexia or dysgraphia. Writing is an arduous task. And so I am also going to share with you an example of one of my own sons because he is dysgraphic, dyslexic, and, and has dyscalculia. And so on the left here, we have a handwritten assignment and the assignment was to write a one page story that he actually did. He completed the one page. Unfortunately, it's not very legible. And then, you know, obviously he got really big in the middle and really big at the end because he's just trying to fill content. Um, the sad thing is, is that both his educator and I know that if we sit down and talk to him, he will paint us a beautiful story with his words. You just can't get that onto paper. And so what I did was I shared with him how to use dictation and all of the tools that are built into Word. And this is what he came up with. And start to finish, it only took him 12 minutes, including editing. Whereas on the left, this took 55 minutes of his language arts class and was obviously very difficult. So I'm gonna show you how all of those things are possible. And what I'm going to do is instead of flipping through slides on PowerPoint, I'm just going to go ahead and show you in right in Word. So let's Microsoft Word. I don't think I've still um, grasped presenting when everyone's so quiet. It's, it's still so different. <laughs> Not seeing people's faces or um, being able to engage in that way for me is very different. Um, I think I want to chat with all you guys. Um, so here we are in Microsoft Word, and I'm going to show you the different tools that my son used to be able to more effectively demonstrate um, what he was thinking and when he created that story. So the first tool is dictation. And so let's go ahead. You'll note that I'm under the Home tab. And then all the way over here to the right is dictation. And so when I click on that, I can now begin dictating. And you'll notice that it's a very effect effective, efficient tool for me to use. Period. Okay, so I know it can be hard to see. Whoops, let's turn that off. <laughs> I know it can be hard to see what I'm doing on my screen, so let me just push that up a little bit, and then I'm going to highlight that. So it, even though I stumbled on my words a little bit, dictation picked up everything. And um, I also like to share with people that I have, um, I kind of jokingly say I've been a donor of dictation software for uh, at least a decade here. And, it, you know, that's donor is correct. I had up until Microsoft Word came out with dictation, I did not feel that any of the software I was using was effective in removing those roadblocks that I was experiencing with writing. And so this is something that works just like my iPhone. It's very quick. It picks up what I'm saying and I don't have to train it. That's the other thing. So this is what my son used. But importantly for students who are um, creating content, utilizing dictation is the ability to one, be able to dictate, but also under the review tab, we click on read aloud and then they can have read aloud what they just wrote. Okay, so they have that read back to them. Um, and then they kind of change things around from there. You know, if you've got, okay, I've got the word effective twice, now I can take one of those out. So it's that um, ability to toggle between those two. But then in addition to that, and I'm just gonna erase this for a minute, we can see that we have some squiggly lines and different things popping up. So the students can very effectively and independently edit their documents. So we move from or we're in the review tab here. We've had our document read aloud to us. And now we can go to editor over here and click on that. And we have an editor pane that pops up and enables us to walk through our document entirely independently correcting things as we go along. So right now we've got a spelling error popping up and I can just click on that. 
And you'll see I get a drop down list of possible suggestions here. Whereas previously, if you're someone who struggles with writing and you're not able to disambiguate between, well, which version of that word did I mean? Now I've got this context down here that gives me a little bit of help. And if I'm fatiguing at that point, I can have this read aloud. Okay, so I can say that's not the one I want, but I wanted this one. And so that helps you to more effectively be able to write and um, walk through things. And so we have our grammar here that's picking up and it will tell us what we need to do. It'll make a suggestion. And if I want to learn a little bit more, I can click on this arrow and I can understand why this was picked up. And I can use these arrows here to continue to toggle through my document. Um, until I'm finished. So that's the capabilities built into the editor pane. And then in addition to that, we also have word prediction built in. So you'll notice if I start typing word prediction is popping up. And so how we engage that is through our settings. And I'm going to um, show you that when we move back into our slides. Uh, but so all of these tools give us the ability to more effectively create content. And so this is this is very effective for students who require a little bit more help and um, need that additional help to be able to create that content content independently. Before we go back into the slide and show you um, word prediction, I want to call out one other feature that I like in particular when it comes to, um, again, remote learning, but providing accessibility to students. And that is that we have that translator button here. It's built under review. And so whether it's providing um, access for a student who's a non-native speaker or maybe even a parent who's a non-native speaker that needs to um, be able to be a voice at the table for that student we have, translation available with a click of a button so I can translate a section or the entire document and when I click on that um, I get the choice of anywhere up to 65 different languages uh, with this drop down menu and I can translate this document so and then again remember um, under the view tab we have immersive reader built in and so again this is the desktop version of word so this looks slightly different than any other variation you've seen um, desktop version but i've got read aloud i've got syllables text spacing line focus mode and all of these other features available okay so i'm going to close immersive reader so you've got those two options in word desktop You've got the review tab and read aloud to just be able to have that read back to you. Or if you are needing that immersive reader experience as you read a document, then you can use under the view tab immersive reader. So all sorts of great features and tools built into Word desktop at your disposal to more effectively be able to create content, um, both when you are within the classroom and um, during remote learning. So let's take a look at, let's go back into the slide deck and show you how to enable your um, word prediction. And then we will move into some math tools I wanna share with you as well. So. Um, if you have any questions right now, great time to type those in. I'm going to allow some time at the end, but it might be great to queue those up. So here we are with our slide on word prediction. And so what you'll want to do is you want to go to your settings on your device. And then within your settings, you type in typing. And once you get to your typing settings, you click on show text suggestions as I type. And so that will enable you with word prediction again for Windows 10. So I think that's an amazing feature for students who are just learning to write. It's great to utilize that in addition to dictation. Okay, I'm going to go back into OneNote and I'm going to share my 
OneNote with you, and we're going to look at some math features that are built into OneNote that enable students with a little bit more capability to solve math. And the reason this is important is because our students who struggle with dyslexia or dysgraphia oftentimes also struggle with math. So let me just go back to sharing my OneNote with you, and let me grab my stylus here. So let's look at a couple of different equations. And the amazing thing about OneNote is that um, we have multiple ways we can provide input. Um, and so I could do that via, you know, typing, or I can do that using my stylus. Um, and it all works wonderfully. Okay, so let's see. I've got an equation here, and what I'm going to do is, again, I'm using a, my stylus here, but I'm going to go to the Draw tab, and I'm going to lasso this equation. And then up here, you'll notice I have math. So once I click on that, I can select an action, and here it's going to provide me a list of relevant options. In this case, my only option is to solve for x, and that's exactly what I need help doing. And so it can provide me the answer, but more importantly, if you're a student who struggles with the sequence or the order of operations, here we can have the steps shown, and that's where it's really helpful. Um, so I have the ability to see how the problem was solved, but then also you'll notice that I've got this immersive reader button. So let's say that I am um, a non-native speaker, or maybe I'm fatiguing with my equations at this point, I can use Immersive Reader to solve the equation, or I'm sorry, to help read this aloud to me. And maybe even we need a little bit of help, so we can we can click on some photographs here and get some and get some photographs to help us create meanings. Um, this is just a really wonderful tool to have built into math. And um, again, you do that by circling your equation and then going to the math uh, button over here on the draw tab. I can also um, I can also graph with this tool. So let me just, just show you quickly. Again, I've handwritten this with my ink stylus, and I'm going to circle this equation and click on the math pane. And then I've got a couple of different options here. I could fix my equation um, in case that I had written it in a way that the computer didn't effectively pick it up. Or I could choose to ink to math, so that would give me the typewritten. But in this case, I'm pretty happy with my writing. So I'm going to go down here and select my action. In this case, I'd like to graph in 2D. And so you'll notice I get this great interactive graph that pops up here. And now I have these different choices. So maybe I'd like to show on my graph. Let me grab my scroll down here. I'd like to show the intercept or the zeros. And so now it's putting these on the graph for me. And then I can also have this inserted on the page. And so here's my completed graphing assignment. And next, I'd like to show you something that I find to be really effective, especially Again, let's say we're back to remote learning next fall and we've got students who are slow to process our math equations and um, slow to learn the order of operation and the sequence. So inking replay can be really helpful for both for students and for educators in a couple of different ways. So what I do here is we go to the view tab and we click on our replay button. And then if we select the text, what's going to happen is we're going to replay how that was done. So again, in this case, for students that struggle with the processing and they need that reteaching moment, this is a perfect tool to utilize when you're showing them new, new equations and new ways to solve. Uh, they could have the inking replay where they just replay that. And then on the flip side, if you're an educator wondering, well, how did my student arrive at that answer how they move through the equation you can also use the inking replay to understand how they did the um, did the solving so i think this is a phenomenal tool just in itself the inking replay again it's under the view tab
and then the replay. So those are just a few of the additional things that I had for you. And let's go ahead back into the slide deck so that I can share with you some of the some of the links and um, other other features that I'd like you to be aware of. I'm sorry, actually, it's it's links that I'm sharing with you. Losing my words here because I have a dog frantically scratching at my door, even though I have um, tried to provide him with some other form of entertainment while I'm doing this. Um, so <laughs> it's always fun. OK, so I'm going to share with you the ends of uh, our, our stuff here before we wrap up and go to questions. So right here is a link for inclusive classroom webinar. This covers reading, writing, math and communication. Very similar to what I've done. It just literally adds in the communication piece. And so that would be using Microsoft Translator or closed captioning. Um, that's something that you guys can check out. And then these are short, sweet, interactive guides. Um, all of these links here will walk you through a click through demo. And so you're clicking through it, learning that content at the same time. And these are absolutely amazing. I cannot encourage you enough to check these out in terms of learning these tools and even would encourage you to share them with your parents, uh, your, your students' parents over the summer and have them just learn this material so that it'll be more helpful to them going into the next school year, whether you're doing remote or in person or even a little bit of both. This website was created uh, specifically for uh, educators and um, co combining all of the wonderful tools and things that um, we need for remote learning support. So I would highly encourage you to check out this website or web link. And lastly, I just want to wrap up before we do Q&A with a slide that's meaningful to me. Uh, this is actor Marley Matlin, who is an Academy Award winning actress for her work in Children of a Lesser God. She says that no one should have to ask, ask for access. It should just be there. I couldn't agree more. And I'd also add that access should not be a members only club for those that can pay for it. Um, that was one of the things that um, really I struggled with as a college student and an individual was that you can have access, but you need to pay for it. So um, with the tools that Microsoft's providing and creating, everyone has access. And it's that's really helps with part of their mission, which is to empower every person on the planet to achieve more. So, OK, let's take a look at our questions. So I'm going to go into questions. Would love to have a few questions or even some comments from you guys today. Um, let's see here. Could you sh show the tool my son used to fix his text in the handout again? Yes, absolutely. Happy to do that. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. And if anyone else has questions, please pop them up or you want to see something else. Now is a great time to put that into the chat window. So let's go ahead. Maria wanted to see the tool my son used. And so we're going to go back into Microsoft Word. And so I've got to move my screen here. Bear with me. Thanks for hanging in there with me today, guys. OK, so we are in Microsoft Word. This is what my son used was Microsoft Word. And he used dictation. So I'm going to go to my home tab. I've clicked on home and I'm going to move first. I'm going to move my cursor here for me and then all the way over to right. We have dictation. So once I click that. I can now quickly and efficiently dictate what I'd like to say. Period. Now I can turn it off and then here's something else I want to show you. You have a choice of languages you can dictate in, so you've got you've got some choice there. If you're dictating in Spanish or English or Chinese, um, that's that's really amazing to have that capability. Okay, so that was the main tool that he was using. Let me go back in to see if you have 
Any other? Okay, Armando, let's see. Is there a video guide or self-paced learning path on teaching students how to use Microsoft Teams for middle school students? Oh, that's a great question, Armando. Um, I tell you what, I would love to ensure that you get the correct answer to that, and I am absolutely sure that there is. Um, I'm not allowed to email you, Armando. Um, that's kind of how we do things at Microsoft, so let me do this. I'm gonna pop up my email address and I would love to have you email me that question so that I can get the appropriate answer for you. So, because I know there's a video guide somewhere and I just don't have it at the top of my head. So here is my email address. You can reach out to me and I will follow up on that for you. And again, here's my Twitter handle if anyone wants to check that out too. So I'm going to go back into questions, see if anyone else has any. Thanks, Armando. OK, good. Look forward to your email. Anyone else have anything for us today? Would love to have a couple more questions or even a comment. Did you find this presentation helpful? Um, do you think that you'll be able to utilize these tools with your students? I guess in the next question I'd have is, have you seen any of these tools before? Beth, absolutely able to share a link to my PowerPoint deck here. Let me grab that for you and I'll put it into the chat window. So give me one minute. Let's do that. Make sure everyone has a link. OK, coming right up. OK, here is a link to my PowerPoint deck. It's in the chat window. You're welcome, Maria. Thank you for joining us. Um, guys, feel free to feel free to drop off. I've got you know 10 minutes to give you back. And um, again, PowerPoint link is is in the chat window here. I am going to post this video in the YouTube channel and then I believe they'll also probably pop up a, a link there for PowerPoint as well. So please feel free to utilize all of the links that I've shared with you. Highly encourage you to check out the click through deck there on the interactive guides. And have a wonderful summer, everyone. OK, if there are no other questions, thank you for joining me today. I appreciate everyone for taking the time to learn with me and just have a wonderful day.